Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. With Rob O'Hara. Sprite Castle. Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Sprite Castle Plays video. Uh, this is the accompaniment to the Sprite Castle podcast. Uh, you know what I haven't shown in a while? I haven't thrown up all the uh, links lately. Um, as you can see right here, you can go to uh, facebook.com forward slash Robcast. If you want to follow all my uh, podcasts, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Commodore. Uh, you know what it doesn't have here? It has my uh, email address, Rob O'Hara at Rob com. Oh, I guess up there at the top. I stuck the uh, podcast.robohara.com, which is where you can find all my podcasts, both Sprite Castle and You Don't Know Flack, and all my old podcasts are all there, too. And um, I need to update this. I need to put my Patreon on there, my patreon.com forward slash Rob O'Hara. How's everybody doing tonight? I am doing pretty well, and um, we are... Uh, now I seem to have lost my window here. Let's see if we can... Uh, uh, Oh, oh my gosh, we've got some loud music going on here. We're going to dump that down just a little bit here. There we go. Kicking in uh, to some uh, Karateka uh, this evening. It's still too loud, I think. That's too quiet. There we go. Looking at my monitor. That looks like it's about right. Um, Karateka. Uh, Karateka is a awesome game. It was released, I believe, in 1984 on the Apple II, and I think the Commodore 64 version came out uh, one year later in 1985. So this would have been, man, this is um, peak karate area or not area era, I should say, for the Flagster. This is, um, let's see, what do we got in 1984? We have, um, uh, oh, it's just throwing me right in here. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, The Karate Kid, I think, in 84. Um, I know we had Enter the Ninja in, in uh, 81. I wasn't big Enter the Ninja, but uh, Revenge of the Ninja was my jam. That's what made me want to uh, think that I was going to become a professional ninja someday. It didn't pan out. I became uh, went into IT instead, but I have a uh, physique much more suited for IT <laughs> than I have for uh, ninja missions. Let's see. Let's see what we got over on left monitor today. Oh, we got dancing karate dude ready to go. And there's us. We are. Um, uh, let's see, am I playing here? I don't seem to be playing. I'm, that's a demo. <laughs> uh, so I already loaded this up. You didn't really miss anything except for the uh, Broderbund logo. Uh, but this is a, a cracked copy that has some extra uh, features built in. One of them is slightly faster loading, which uh, you'll be hard-pressed to notice uh, that it's any faster. Now, as we approach our uh, first enemy here, that's us on the left. Uh, you're going to hear a whole lot of button clicking and joystick mashing on tonight's uh, Sprite Castle plays because uh, that is how Karateka is played. Um, now, on the uh, Apple II, and I talk about this a lot, I compare a lot of games on the Apple II to the Commodore 64. You know, the Commodore 64 obviously has, um, uh, this isn't, I don't think this is opinion, I think this is just uh, accepted. The Commodore 64 has better graphics uh, than the Apple II, and it has uh, better sound capabilities than the Apple II. Uh, by the way, as uh, I guess I should, well, I'll finish this thought here before I go on. I've got a bad habit of doing that, of interrupting myself, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking here. Uh, we got to kill this guy first. Now, oh, come on. Now. Um, but... All right, so we can stand up and run. Now, when you're running in this manner, and this is what I was going to say, you are defenseless against enemies. And so anything that hits you while you're running, a single strike will kill you. So it's very important to... Um, you have to run because you're trying to get to the other end of this level. And the faster you get there, the less opponents you'll face. But uh, whenever you see an opponent's hit points pop up down there, 
Uh, you need to let off the joystick immediately because if you are in this uh, position, you are very vulnerable to a single hit death. So, uh, you know, Commodore 64, I mean, as a kid, you could put a Commodore 64 next to an Apple II, and it was obvious uh, which version of a game was better. Oops, see, I let off just a little bit late there, but we could push him back. And I need to figure out, um, I'm not exactly sure how to punch on this version, which you do need to do. And punching uh, the, the uh, eagle that comes up shortly is, is a lot easier than kicking him. Um... So, uh, is it, it's not what I'm moving. No, well, that's just moving me backwards. I am going to have to figure that out, though. Oh, boy, this guy is being a doo-doo. Uh, but, you know, the thing is for, uh, you know, like I said, the Commodore had, had um, uh, better graphics. It had um, better sound. Uh, it probably had a bigger game library, but... Uh, the one thing that the Apple had, and I talk about this a lot, is that the joystick had two different buttons. It had two buttons, uh, and the Commodore 64 only had one. It used the Atari, or the, uh, yeah, like the Atari 2600, the DB9 connection on the joystick. So, uh, all of the, not all of these games, but a lot of the games that I play um, would benefit from two separate buttons, you know. And so, on Karateka on the Apple II, for example... One button punches, the other button kicks. Um, Karate Champ was the same way. I mean, all these different games. Uh, I talked about Load Runner, where on the um, Apple II... Oh, come on, let's run. I've got time to be standing around corpses here. i got to get get to the pagoda like a pagoda. Um, you know, in Load Runner on the Apple II, you dug left and right, and it was, uh, you know, it... it made so much sense and then on the commoner version with only one button you just uh you dig whichever way you're facing and it's so different that it's almost a different game i mean it's so it's such a different uh you have to use literally different uh uh strategies you know when you're playing it because it's just such a different game so you know it, it's really in hindsight i'm sure you know commodore was um famous for using the cheapest parts possible and getting away with as little as they could and and um you know i'm sure that i'm sure the db9 connectors were some sort of cheap thing and, and of course there's the um uh you know jack tramell will always have the uh, atari connection so maybe you know that was had something to do with it but it's really unfortunate uh you know because i, I think um when you're when you're looking at games you could say well you know this part of this game is better on the Commodore, but this part is better on an Apple. But I think if, um, you know, the Commodore 64 had had two individual and unique buttons uh, on the joystick, I, I think it would have been, uh, it would have made it uh, unanimous. You know, I mean, you would have been hard pressed in games like uh, Commando where you shoot with the fire button, but you throw grenades with the space bar, you know, and, and there have been, I know there's uh, some new technology that's, that's, uh, in fact, I just saw another thing that's a, a gamepad, I guess, for the Commodore 64. I think ProtoVision's behind it. I got to find out more details. Maybe I'll talk about that um, on tomorrow's podcast. So for Sprite Castle Plays, I normally play uh, whatever game I'm going to review the day before. I mean, I've, I've obviously played this uh other times this week, but uh, so tomorrow's episode of Sprite Castle will, will be uh, Karateka. So if you you tune in early, you watch the night before here, then you know what's up. Um, let's see. So I, you know, I, I hate to use uh, all my material that I'm going to be, I'm going to have to look up how to do a punch here. I'm going to have to pause the game and do that. Uh, because it's going to be important here on level two. All right, let's see if I should be able to get in the pagoda here and let's get us to level two. And then we have um, a little loading and then we'll have a little cutscene here. I don't know if Karateka is the, well, it's not the first game. I think uh, Pac-Man uh, was the first game with cutscenes. Um, but this may have been the first computer game like this that I remember that had, you know, cinematic cut screens. It was really cool. Boy, I'm getting my butt kicked. 
So after I beat this guy and I start running, I'm going to have to start watching for the eagle, I believe. And there's a um, there's an audio cue that you have to listen for. So right when you're toe-to-toe -to -toe with your opponent, uh, that is the perfect distance to uh, be able to strike each other. Of course, if he lifts his leg or leans back or something, then you can um, tap the joystick in one direction. Like I'll just uh, tap it to the right here as soon as he's done kicking. And you do that little scoot to close the distance. Um, if you hold the joystick, you'll do the full uh, leg over leg crossover walk like that. Um, and if you close that the other way, while you're holding the button, you'll kind of do that walking kick, which is a great way to um, kill two birds with one stone. You can cover that distance and you could get a, hopefully a kick in. Uh, your combos in Karanaka are limited to three at a time. So you can throw three kicks before having to put your leg back down. Um, but uh, there, there's really uh, no memorization, not like uh, the fighting games that most people are used to. When it comes to, uh, oh, throwing punches and kicks and stuff, I'm literally just holding down the button and pressing, uh, you know, up for a high kick, down for a low kick. If you want to attack the knee area, if you think you're uh, Johnny from the Cobra Kai, I want you for the knee. Sweep the leg. Okay, so now we're going to run, and you'll see... The guy here. Oh, I guess we may get one more enemy here. I don't know if we get the the eagle or not. I guess we're going to find out when I'm running here. No, it looks like we're getting another guy. All right. That sounded ominous. Yeah, that's right. Oh, he hit me. If I remember right, he just does one attack. Yeah, he just does one attack. So you can... Oh, boy. He's coming back. See, I am going to have to figure out a punch because uh, the kicks are so slow. Now, this is... um, I, I'm definitely not blind to uh, the faults in Commodore games. And I'm actually, uh, you know, quick to point them out sometimes. And, uh, you know, it's very obvious that this game runs slow. I mean, the graphics are beautiful. Uh, especially for the era. I mean, this is mid eighties. This is, um, uh, you know, you can tell that they've taken the, the basics of the, um, graphics from the original, from the Apple II, the, uh, uh, I guess you would call it the rotoscoped, uh, graphics. All right. Now we're going to have to listen. Little laid off the joystick button there. Let's try to hold him at bay here until we get set up. Now, yeah, what I kind of do is I wait to see if he's going to come in, scoot in with an attack. Like this guy doesn't see me. He's going to. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, if he's kicking, you can't. Uh, and also, he kicks slower than you do. So you will fire off your three. And then right when you're done. Oh, I didn't want to do that. That is a good technique, though. You can kind of, uh, sometimes if uh, uh, you're having trouble with the space or whatever, you can kind of jam his attacks by just walking into him here. I can time this right. So here's the story, and I'll be telling this tomorrow on the podcast, but I just might as well tell it, um, is that um, uh, for the app, so we, we had a, a family friend, um, my mom uh, used to uh, babysit uh, their daughter. And this family friend, I believe in the Christmas of 94, bought me, hey, Lord Soup, what's going on, my friend? I'm just, uh, I know this is a surprise. I'm playing games and telling stories. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, uh, so in 1984, I believe it was, this uh, family friend, uh, let's see, in 84 for Christmas, I would have been 11 years old. Uh, this family friend bought me Karatika for the Apple II. And uh, 
I started playing it, you know, right after Christmas, like, you know, everything's been open and stuff, and I threw a Karateka into the, into the old computer and uh, started playing it, and about the third time I played it, I beat the game. All right, let's listen for the old eagle here. No, nope, he didn't come again. All right, that's good for us. And uh, so my dad, you know, so my dad came over, and he was like, uh, you know, oh, how do you like your new game you got? And I was like, well, I just beat it, you know? And he was like, what? And I go, yeah, you know, I just, I just beat the game. And he said, well, that's, you know, ridiculous. It's an expensive game, you know? And I'm like, eh. I mean, I guess for some reason it didn't phase me. Like I, you know, I was used to playing games and, and, uh, you know, I just thought I was, I was good at it, you know? And so uh, the day after Christmas, my dad, um, uh, and I, I, I just, told the story on a you don't know flack my other sister podcast where i talk i was and i was talking about malls and so we went back to um they had bought the game from um i believe electronic boutique or i don't think they were babbages yet but i think it was eb and uh took the game you know back to the mall the day after christmas and my dad's like hey my my kid got this and and he beat it that's too easy you know you shouldn't pay forty dollars for a game that's you could beat that quickly, and uh, and they took it back, <laughs> which, I mean, can you imagine? That was such an early era of buying games and stuff, but can you imagine now just like, you know, I mean, when I worked at Best Buy, we took some things back, but can you imagine just people just like buying, you know, games on floppy disk and, um, uh, and then just being like, you know, Eh, I played it. It was too easy. I want something else other than letting him exchange it. But that's what happened. And so, uh, uh, and I don't remember, but I get this feeling like, you know, the guy may have recommended something or whatever. But, you know, my dad's complaint was that the game was too easy. And so instead, he offered us uh, wizardry, or pointed out wizardry. And that, that's the way I remember is that maybe he suggested that, you know, as a game that would that would last a little bit longer. And so that was how I got wizardry. And in fact, um, I, I've uh, talked about this, but my dad worked, um, I believe it's called Graveyard Shift, uh, but he worked three to midnight uh, during the week when I was a kid. And so uh, I would get or, you know, I would get home from school and um uh, come in and start playing wizardry and I would, you know, map out dungeons and things like that and take our party out and do all that stuff. And, um, when, uh, you know, then I eventually have to do something else go to bed or whatever. And, um, then my dad would get home and I would leave him a note. I'd be like, Hey, I'm in dungeon two, blah, 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 whatever. And then my dad would, um, take over. He would come and he would play at night. All right, let's listen if I get attacked here again. I might be able to make it right to the end. No. Oh, now we got a problem here with the, I believe that's the, um, I could never say this word. Is it port, portcullis, portgullis? I've never been able to say it. I'm not going to be able to start now, but I believe that's the one right there that kills you. If you just try to run underneath it, you have to kind of set it off first with a kick. So we'll be sure to do that. But it doesn't seem to be setting off with their guys underneath it. That doesn't seem very fair. The biggest thing with this game is uh, patience. You know, if, you, if you're if you like, oh, I'm just tired of these guys, and you just start walking into them, they will uh, eventually destroy you. But um, um, and if you just kind of wait and pick your shots, it's not really, not really that hard. Uh... So, yeah, so he would, my dad would come in and he would play wizardry for a few hours in the middle of the night, and then he would leave me a note. It would say, okay, well, I got us to, you know, the third level of the dungeon. I found this armor, blah, 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 or whatever. And then, so I would go to school the next day, and um, uh, then I would come home and I would read his note. And so that's how we did. So we played wizardry, quote, unquote, together. We just kind of played it, you know, in a tag team fashion where uh, each one of us played uh uh, our different shifts or whatever, and, and that's a uh, special memory that I have about uh, wizardry. But if it hadn't been for Karataka, we never would have got wizardry. So, uh, oh no, don't get me. 
<laughs> Your dad would play uh, Star Raiders 2. I've never played uh, Star Raiders 2. Is that uh, related? Is that the Atari um, related to the Atari game, Star Raiders? Because um, I, I know that uh, I played that. You know, there was this this time with the uh, Atari 2600 where, um, oh, just in name. Uh, you know, the thing with the Atari 2600 was uh, for a little bit, it was like every game was um, either seemed kind of similar or, you know, seemed pretty basic and stuff. And so they, they started that uh, going down that path where they were going to uh, – uh, expand games from different things and, and one way that they did it was to expand the features of games they um uh, did it you know by adding controllers and things like that and so um oh so if i just press the button while well, i'm not doing anything i punch hmm okay i don't know if that's going to help me here i'm really afraid this thing's going to kill me I don't want to move forward. Um, but I remember Star Raiders on the Atari 2600 and having it come with the the controller, you know, and, um, uh, you know, thinking like that was a way that they were, um, you know, going to advance games. Can I just keep moving forward? I really feel like this is going to kill me. It killed me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, guess who's happy about that? <sighs> the and back to loading. So, yeah, I remember, um, Star Raiders doing that. I remember what was a space shuttle, Activision space shuttle, where you would use the two joysticks. Um, I think, yeah, space shuttle used two joysticks. Um, Raiders of the Lost Art used two joysticks where you had to do, you know, things. So it was just like the games were, they were trying to make them too complex, for, um, more complex than what you could handle with a single joystick, you know. Um, and so I get that that got a little bit more life out of the um, uh, Commodore sixty four or not Commodore sixty four out of the uh, Atari twenty six hundred or whatever. But you know, say what you want. Um, you know, a lot a lot of um, people even that are into retro games, a retro game. Uh, you know, people that like eight bit computers, and and of course, uh, you know, we've uh, I've kind of. Um, as I like to say, piggybacked off of uh, the uh, popularity of the Amigos. And, you know, I've been on their Discord and, and they're um, hosting my videos on on YouTube. But people think of, you know, those games as being old. But a lot of the people that enjoy that don't enjoy Atari 2600 games. But I think um, something that gets lost in translation is that um, AI, computer AI in general was not very good back then. I guess I should hit the button here and start this uh, instead of letting the demo run. Um, and so those games were fun when you played against another human being. You know, if you've ever played, like to this day, if you set up uh, an Atari 2600 and combat, combat is a fun game with two human beings. And you can sit there and... and um, you know, figure out how you're going to shoot each other and, and figure out your angles and, and uh, stuff like that. Okay, so if I'm just hitting... Yeah, I guess it does. That does punch. Not a good idea to be doing it right now, but it does seem to work. I don't have to remember that. But I don't know how to punch high or low. Maybe you can't. Maybe you just have to... Um, if the bird's coming low or something, you have to kick it. You got to kick it with the bird. Um... So, you know, combat is a great example. Outlaw is a great example. Um, Atari basketball is a great example. Those games are not good games if you're playing them in one-player mode. You know, the basketball game is not very much fun. Outlaw is not very much fun. Air-sea battle. Those things are all just goofy games, you know. But in two-player, that competition thing comes out, and, and uh, you know, you immediately... 
uh, get competitive and, and you forget about whether the graphics are good. If you've ever played, um, what is the game with the little teeter thing? Circus Atari. That game is a blast with two people. And I'll tell you another game that's a blast on the Atari 2600 um, is uh, skydiving, where you and a friend jump out of airplanes. And, of course, you get points. Uh, you have to land on a specific target. You have to take into consideration the direction and the strength of the wind. But you also have to uh, you get more points the lower to the ground you open your parachute. Of course, if you wait too long, then you get this uh, wonderful splat sound. Um, oh, hey, man, no problem. Uh, I'm just talking about uh, I've been talking about Atari 2600 stuff. But, um, you know, again, the, the gist of it is, is that those games were fun, uh, you know, with two players and they're not really fun uh, one player games. Um, I think there are a lot of fun Commodore 64 one player games. Um, and, um, but of course, you know, that's another thing. If you're going to compare um, Commodore to other computers, obviously the Atari uh, computers had uh, two joysticks, but I never met anybody that had two joysticks on the Apple II. Um, our Apple II, we had to add, um, well, you could, you could plug in a joystick, but it plugs into an internal uh, poor. I mean, it has like pins. It looks like a chip almost, you know, that, that you plug in. Oh, we better stop. Um, you know, so there was no spot for a second one. You would have had to buy an additional joystick card for, you know, uh, depending on what, it, what else it was, maybe a, might be a joystick port on a floppy controller or something. I don't, I don't know, but you would have had to buy a, a card and you would have had to buy a, um, you know, 40 or $50 joystick. So nobody had, two joysticks on the uh, Apple II. I mean, I can't say nobody, but, um, um, but yeah, you know, so a lot of those say Apple, uh, but now Apple did have two player games, but it was, um, you know, player two would have to use the keyboard. I'm sure the uh, CPC was probably the same way. And, and um, uh, but Commodore right out of the box had those two Atari joystick ports, you know, and the other great thing about them being compatible with Atari joysticks was, um, you know, for the uh, uh, Commodore, and uh, you know, by the time the Commodore had come out, I mean, the 64, um, you know, interest in the uh, uh, Atari 2600 was waning, but most people hadn't got rid of them, you know, so everybody had that box in their closet that had a bunch of joysticks and paddles and all that crap in there. And uh, so, you know, you could just run and go get a joystick and, uh, and be good to go. Now, Atari... 2600 joysticks aren't my favorite uh, joystick of all time, but golly, I thought I was going to get close enough where I didn't have to fight another guy. Boop, boop. Um, but they worked, you know, so uh, if you can hear all that clicking, you probably know, and I'm, I'm sure I've shown it on the show before, you know what joystick I'm playing with. It's the classic Epics FJ. I think it's the FJ, is that right? 500. I um, Years ago, it won't be too long that Sprite Castle plays before I'm telling the same stories over and over. And then people will be like, who's this old man who just tells a, repeats himself on stories? But uh, I was uh, on Digital Press years ago, which was a, um, I, I think Digital Press, is, I, mean, I know it is, is still around. Digital Press, uh, Joe Santoli and, and, uh, was the founder. And it was a, it started off as a, um, uh, Oh, a retro computing, or not retro computing, retro um, console collecting site and uh, branched out uh, from there. But uh, on Digital Press one time, there was a buying and selling forum and someone uh, said that, uh, oh, there's my sad, sad girlfriend alone in her cell. Um, and uh, someone said they had for sale four craft joysticks which were my second favorite joystick of all time and four epics uh 500 joysticks and all eight joysticks were new in the box and i don't remember i think the guy was asking ten dollars each for which and this was it would have been a while back i mean this is probably 10 or 12 years ago something like that so not terribly long ago but you know not it's not today prices but I said, I'll just take them all. And he said, well, you, what do you mean all? I'm like, I'll take all eight. So I have four craft joysticks and four Epics joysticks that I got new in the box in uh, the 
early to mid 2000s and i figured that would be a lifetime supply that was <laughs> that was my plan is uh i would never need more joysticks and uh i've really only used uh one of the craft joysticks i have that hooked up to my uh i have it hooked up to my uh mister that i use it for amiga uh, gaming and no i don't want to say mister my mist i do not have a mister not yet i'd like to get one but um uh, i'm still using my original mist um and then uh, I opened up two of the Epix joysticks, and I've been using those on the Commodore 64. So I still have two of the uh, Epic sticks and uh, three of the Craft sticks, all still sealed in boxes. Um, you know, the uh, Atari joysticks worked pretty good and uh, for a long period of time unless they got abused. You know, uh, I remember, I think a lot of people who grew up with the Atari 2600 have stories of, I know I've heard this story from three different people. Uh, well, two different people, and I'm a third, uh, that had dads who broke Atari 2600 joysticks. My wife, um, her dad broke an Atari 2600 joystick playing Pac-Man. Um, my dad uh, broke an Atari 2600 joystick, and another friend's dad both playing um, uh, video pinball. <laughs> So, um, you know, you could lean and lean and nudge, nudge to the point where if you kept leaning and stuff on the joystick, eventually you could possibly wear it out. Okay, so I think first I have this guy. Yeah, so he comes first. Watching for the bird. Okay, there. That sound right there told me the birds are coming. Oh. Did you hear that? I was punch, punch, punching. But I don't think I got him. Um, the, um, you know, and, and Atari 2600 joysticks are normally pretty easy to uh, repair. You know, as long as the little plastic base inside isn't broken, it's not, uh, it's not too bad. You know, you can, um, the contacts are easy to clean and, and even, um, you know, if the wires come undone or something, they're they're not uh, too bad uh, to fix. But you know what? I was, um, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, the uh, the little eraser tricks those always worked. Um, uh, all right. Now, did I just? I think the last time I just had one. Just got attacked by the falcon one time. I got him. Look at that. Look at me. I don't know why I'm so happy that I'm a, I just punched a bird. That doesn't seem very nice. <clears throat> There's a ethical question to be had there. Uh, I, I've seen it a few times, but um, I, I, it's come up in the world of uh, interactive fiction, you know, the new world of uh, text adventures. Uh, and that is, um, is it... Um, should you make a player or should you force a player to do something that in real life they find um, objectionable? You know, so, I mean, in this, in this case, we're, we're, you know, fighting people that have uh, kidnapped our girlfriend. So I, there's not too many people, I think, that would have a moral dilemma with that. But a lot of people don't care for um, uh, fighting animals. In video games now, I mean, for me, I'm you know, it's pixels. It, it doesn't bother me personally, but I do know people that um, that it bothers, and I can tell you that um, uh, I remember people being upset by the original um, Wolfenstein 3D because you had to shoot dogs, and that was a uh, um, kind of controversial. Now they were, um, you know, Nazi dogs, <laughs> so maybe that's how you're supposed to. Uh, um, you know, justify that. But in the movies, you know, when the detective has to sneak into the um, compound wherever he's going and uh, uh, has to get past the guard dog, they, he doesn't shoot the dog. He always gives the dog sleeping pills. You're right. It puts the sleeping pills in the food or I didn't mean to do that. I meant to kick you in the belly like that, you dummy. Um, you know, because you don't want uh, the hero to be somebody who's uh, mean to animals, you know? Oh, did I get him? I, on the other hand, have no problem punching a bird and uh, have done it and will do it again. <laughs> I don't, never hit a bird. But 
uh, I don't know. It's an interesting um, thing, you know, and especially uh, with uh, text adventures because text adventures are typically written in first person, you know, I'm interactive fiction. It says you are the, you know, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You are the star of the story and, and all right, I'm going to cover the ground by sweeping in with one of those attacks. Let's see if we can knock some points off this dude. And uh, so when you're reading a story that says you do this, you punched a bird, you shot a dog, you know, it gets a little weird, you know. So I don't have a problem with the Karatika guy punching this falcon that has been obviously sent to peck his eyes out, you know. It's not like it was coming for a treat. Mm, mm, mm. Kick, kick, kick. You know, uh, I owned a uh, Karate Champ arcade cabinet. I loved arcade uh, version of Karate Champ as a kid. And I played it so much that the moves of the two joysticks just became um, just like, you know, uh, uh, like I just had them memorized. I, I loved the control system of Karate Champ. It's Obviously, it's hard to do... Um, it's hard to replicate at home on a single joystick. Uh, you you know you do have the button, so you have, in theory, eight different directions on a joystick without the button, and then another eight with the button. So so you you know there's the uh, possibility of, of a lot of, of things, but but you kind of have to make sense too. Like you can't have a backwards kick be forward in the button. You know what I mean? So you so you're kind of limited. Obviously, you're going to have jumping attacks, which are going to be up and and crouching attacks, which are going to be down, that sort of thing. So, uh, whoops. Um, but, uh, you know, so there were a lot of fighting games on the uh, Commodore 64 that really suffered. They don't have a lot of depth when it comes to the moves. And it's because, you know, again, we're down to this one uh, DB9 joystick with a single button. All right, so now this guy should come. Let's remember, folks, what happens uh, when... You, oh, no, 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 That was an accident. I started walking towards the thing. Stop doing that. Scoot back, scoot back, scoot back, scoot back. The thing is, is that this game is... Um, there's just this... It's, it's almost like playing underwater. <laughs> it's just slow enough that... Uh, uh, you know, that that um, when you move, you wait a second, and then your guy does whatever he's supposed to do. And uh, so it's it's easy to uh, overcorrect. One, two, so I'll wait till he throws that third one. And then I'm going to scoot back out of range. Yeah, see, like I held the button a little too long. You're not going to trick me again. You're going to have to come out of this way, my friend. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, um, I think it, maybe that's a psychological uh, choice also to have the bad guys in games like this, uh, or, you know, Karataka, uh, wear masks, you know, so you don't see, I mean, not that the, the face is particularly detailed on on uh, my guy, but on I oh, got me. It's hard to know if he's going to throw one, two, or three. Oh, he, did he throw four? That's not fair. There we go. Come on now. I really want to get to level three here. I believe there are five levels, and who knows if we'll see them all tonight. I may end up breaking this joystick. <laughs> there won't be enough erasers to fix this one if I get mad. I've actually not. I think I talked about this uh, the other day. I've never been a um, joystick thrower. Like, I had a friend who, uh, I mean, he would just throw joysticks, you know. Um, and, uh, man, when I was a kid, like, first of all, uh, I'm pretty sure I paid for all my own joysticks, so I wasn't I wasn't going to throw stuff I owned, you know. And then of course, if you didn't uh, 
disconnected. Like I remember, uh, he would he would always throw his Nintendo controllers, and uh, the Nintendo would just go flying across the floor or whatever. I was like, yeah, that wasn't me. Uh, I was too broke for those habits. <laughs> All right, getting closer now. There we go. There's a good series. Almost. We're almost there. One more hit. And then I will show you how to beat this. The problem with this game is like what you saw last time is that there are a few things in this game that just kill you instantly. All right. So let's scooch over kick okay that triggers it and now we're going to sit here and try to run oh well don't keep running into it, you dumbass it's taking off my hit points um so we're going to stand up and then right before it gets to the top we're going to run underneath it and that is how you beat it's almost like a boss i suppose at the end of the level i mean it's something you have to figure out and get past No cry, baby. Karatika's coming for you. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, I see some other people there in the um, uh, chat window. How's everybody doing? I got to flip back over all because I'm going to get beat up here. But uh, feel free to uh, hop in. I know I saw 1010 down there at the bottom. I am. Uh, in this game, I'm Cobra Kai. So, haha. -ha. <laughs> um, so I've just been talking a little bit about Karatika, about how I got it as a uh, Christmas present. Um, you know, uh, it, Karatika is what it is. It's not a super deep game. And, and part of the problem is it looks like an adventure, I, I suppose. Or I mean, it's not really an adventure, side scrolling, you know, um, but there's, there's nowhere else to go. I mean, you're just going to keep going to the, to the right until you know you beat all the levels and uh uh but without this we wouldn't have got prince of persia and so th that is to me you know the one of the most important things about karateka is that uh you know you could see the uh early influence you know that eventually uh this game had on prince of persia so uh, I think that that makes it a little bit important. Here's a, uh, I'm just thinking here, trivia fact about Karataka. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. This is uh, predates uh, Exploding Fist and uh, International Karate. Uh, this is uh, uh, 84. And uh, if you want to look, maybe look those up on um, Moby Games or something. But I'm sure those are later uh, than that. Um, but, uh, um, the, uh, Karataka on the Commodore 64 version, I hope I'm, I hope I get this right, but on the opposite, like on the B side, the other side of the floppy had the, uh, Atari version. So one side was Commodore, the other side was, uh, Atari, but on the Apple, it was just, uh, you know, Apple and it didn't say oh what are we doing here do i gotta kick that oh i guess so my worst enemy so far a door <laughs> all right you know this game has a lot of different ways of uh presenting enemies but it's always the same i mean you're always just fighting a guy on a 2d plane here you know um but uh, the um, uh, Apple II, <laughs> exactly. Sweep the leg. I'm trying to sweep the leg. Yeah, I knew. Uh, I knew International Karate was was uh, definitely the um, uh, the latest of those three. But yeah, and and uh, you know, Way of the Exploding Fist and some of those other games. Uh, I I think their um, influence is more. Obviously, Karate Champ, you know, when you look at it, it's like like two-player. Now, this game is only one player, but there is a two-player hacks. Somebody has hacked it to make it a, a two-player game, but originally 
Uh, it was only a, a one-player game. Uh, anyway, back onto this this trivia. The Apple II version. Uh, when you bought it, it it just said side one Karatika, and, and there was nothing for side two. But if you flip the disc over upside down and booted it, uh, you know the back side of the disc, then it would load Karatika, but the game would be completely upside down. And so that it was a an Easter egg, and I don't. I mean, I don't know how much work would have got into that. I mean, I suppose it's probably a pretty simple uh, setting to just, uh, you know, flip the uh, vertical or whatever. But, um, yeah, so if you take the Apple II version, and, and, of course, even if you do an emulator, there are images of the back side of the disc, but you flip the disc over and boot, because you're booting it upside down, right? And so when you boot it upside down, uh, the entire game appears uh, upside down as well. So I always thought that was a cool, cool little Easter egg, you know, that um, uh, probably a lot of people owned that copy and never knew that. Like, I mean, a lot of people never probably tried to boot the backside of their game. But uh, so I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, this was definitely um, knee deep in the karate era for me. You know, I've shared um, on You Don't Know Flack that... Uh, you know, I took karate. I was into karate. Uh, so I would have been, uh, into, you know, by the time this came out, I would have been in karate. How about it? Let's not. It's amazing that I can beat up bad guys and I'm losing to a door. Just get a little close there, Ralph. There we go. And guess what's waiting here? Another guy. I know that's a. Why don't I just bow? You see that? I'm like, all right. I will honor you before I kill you. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like the, uh, I mean, the graphics on this must have just been, um, you know, pushing the old C64 to its limit. You can see the the speed at which it's going, and, it, and it's um, it does feel sluggish. Like, like I said, I'm not a... Um, apologist uh you know for for games and and for uh you know I, i'm a realist i think you know um i mean i do love the commodore 64 and when stuff is great you know I, that's how i present it but um oh i got something in the mail today and after when i die as an extra bonus i'm gonna go run it and open it because i think um some of you commodore 64 fans are gonna find it uh pretty fun but yeah, you know, I mean, the Commodore was was built to play games. You know, I mean, it had, uh, you know, the Vic chip. It had sprites. It had the SID chip for the music. You know, I mean, it was, oh, why am I doing that? I'm not making smart decisions in life or in the uh, dojo. <sighs> Let's see what he's doing here. Is he just throwing one kick at a time? He is. Watch this. Coming in, buddy. I really don't want to trade shots with them, but there we go. Oh, boy. But, yeah, see how his kicks are just a little slower than mine. So I'll get off three, and he gets off two, and then he hits me with that third one. I don't know why I say it like I'm surprised because it's happened the entire time. But yeah, this um, there's something about this game that uh, I mean just feels like it it pushes uh, the limits possibly just a little past where it was. And I know there are you know some of those turbo cartridges and and um, even emulators where you can you can um, speed up the uh, processor a little bit. And that would be interesting to you know possibly boost this up twenty five percent or something like that. You know, run it uh, increase the uh, emulated megahertz of the uh, processor on the 64 and see if it uh, played better without uh, messing anything up. You know, sometimes when you start messing with uh, uh, timers and things like that, it can screw up, uh, you know, things that, uh, well, he's just sitting there waiting for me, isn't he? Uh, you know, timing-based things that uh, uh, the programmers hadn't, uh, hadn't uh, you know, planned on. I'm sure they didn't imagine someday people would be, Messing with the, the speed or the, the display, you know. Yeah, this guy's a patient one, man. 
Oh, right into it. Yep. Oh, come on. Oh, I like it when he just stands there and takes three. That's nice. Three more. Come on now, Karataka man. Oh, snuck in the old punch there. I uh, think I, you know what? I, I just told this story on You Don't Know Flax, so I don't need to tell it again. But I, I did um, tell how... Uh, uh, through a random coincidence, I ended up purchasing the uh, Karate Champ cabinet that was the same one that had belonged to a local arcade. So it was the same cabinet that I had played as a kid. And uh, I always thought that was pretty cool. Um, and um, I think I said on the uh, episode, it's one of two. Oh, my gosh. I'll tell you what. I mean, if you want to say one thing about the bad guy, the kidnapper is that he had no shortage of funds when it came to hiring cronies to guard that place. Jeez. But I think we're, we're getting close to the end. I, um, I don't know if somebody wants to look up if there's how many levels there are, but if there's only three levels, I mean, we're on the third level, so we may actually beat uh, Karataka here. All right, hat man. I like how this dude's hat, um, there was one guy at the beginning of the level whose hat looked like, uh, or his mask, it was like a, a demon-esque, you know, kind of mask, or like a kabuki mask, and I like that one. This guy, I mean, I always thought he just looked like um, one of the Death Star <laughs> guys, like that big black eggshell helmet, you know, that the guys that uh, fired the gun on the on the Death Star, you know, it's a kind of a doofy-looking helmet. Uh but I, and I do like the the more samurai looking ones, you know. But this uh, this particular helmet I always I thought could look kind of silly. Oh no! Yeah, walked into that. All right. I had about enough of you, Karate Man. All right, let's wait for him to throw that. Let's try our come in attack here again. Kind of jam him up. Oh, we're getting off some punches. Hey, I can trade at this rate. You stay there, I'll stay here, and let's see who wins. It turns out it was me. Now let's go over here and not get killed by a door. Oh, I got some more hit points. Oh, look at all those. Oh, so we are at the end. So now this is a secret. If you, um, oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, I forgot about this. <laughs> it's the eagle. He's back. Yeah. All right, let's get back here so I got a little bit more room to deal with this guy. I guess I'm going to have to be a bird killer after all. You know, I'm just talking about the ethics of uh, fighting birds. Uh, so he comes low, middle, high. And you got to hit him low, middle, or high. Uh, and you got to, oh boy, look at that. He's just eating me alive there. All right, he's. Oh, I thought for sure that was going to be good. All right. Okay, that worked. I don't want anybody to call PETA on me. <laughs> be like, ah, oh, there's this guy streaming some uh, abuse to birds. So it's not really about, it's just about learning the timing of. Uh, like how slow it's going to be, how far away. Yeah, see, like that time he got me. Well, he gets two shots in, too, when he comes in. Well, don't move now. Okay, here we go. Let's time that. Oh, no. That's not right. Come on. Help me kill this bird. No, then I was moving. <sighs> All right, focus, 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 focus. Kick! Oh, look at that exploded! Yes! Um, now I'm sure I gotta find fight uh, old super baddie. I don't recall that, but I'm sure I will. It doesn't seem like he would just run away. So this was a uh, unless the no, I'm I'm gonna have to definitely fight that guy. Oh, here we go.
I don't like that sound. Although that's the sound I usually get when I have to fight a door. <laughs> All right, come on, door. I can take it. Psh. All right, let's go in here. Oh, no, 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 you killed <laughs> Dang it. That's a bunch of crap. Oh, man. Who's laughing now? <laughs> That's Crocker, man. He's laughing. He's digging it out. Yeah, I don't think now's time for celebration. Okay, uh, give me 30 seconds. I'm going to go get this uh, Amazon box, and we're going to open it up. That was not right. Okay. <clears throat> Just should probably zoom out so you can see how big this thing is. What could it be? Well, I'll give you a hint. If you live in other, if you live in um, PAL countries, you've been able to buy this for a couple of years. And if you live in North America, it has been delayed and delayed and delayed. And it was available for pre-order in August. And it was delayed. And it arrived today. It is... The C64. So I will probably be doing a show about this in the near future. I can't imagine most people don't know about this if you're watching a Commodore 64 stream, but the C64 is um, the big boy brother of, uh, thank you, thank you, of the uh, mini C64. Uh, this is a, uh, a Commodore 64 emulator i think it's fair to say i believe it's just running um vice on a chip it comes with 64 games built in but it also has the ability to load games from a uh, usb stick so Now, one thing I'll say about it right off the bat is that um, I was I was hoping uh, that uh, that the packaging would be more like the old U.S. Uh, package instead of um, I mean this pretty much looks like the uh, European release, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, I think they should just every year make just a slightly larger <laughs> version of uh, the C64. So we have the 64 Mini. We had the, um, this is the full size, and then, uh, like, was that in Pee Wee's Big Adventure? It's like shrunken head, regular size, and then raw is the giant head. Now, here's my dilemma with, um, I'm going to uh, mute Karateka here. Here's my dilemma. Eh, I can leave it on low, I guess. My dilemma with the 64 is between the time I ordered it and now I built this, which is my ultimate 64. I have put an ultimate 64 in a clear case. I've added a clear monitor. I also spent way too much money on a pair of clear speakers 
And if you look over here, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Uh, this is a giant clear subwoofer. <laughs> and I've ordered a clear see-through joystick just to round it out. So uh, the table is still kind of messy. But I have an Ultimate 64. And way on the other side of the room, back there next to the uh, ASCII, uh, the Pi Ants system that I have running, is... Um, a Raspberry Pi with uh, BMC64, the bare metal C64, which is a build device that runs directly on top of a Pi without the need of um, Raspbian or any uh, Linux operating system. So you turn it on, it takes two or three seconds to boot up, and it is really, really accurate. Uh, it does a really good job. So uh, I have not just own, hooked up. <laughs> I have three things within 10 feet here. I have my computer on the other side of uh, the webcam, which is running uh, the emulator that I'm playing Karateka on. I have an Ultimate 64 right here that I can touch. I have a cat who has climbed into the Amazon box. Beat it, dummy. All right. And, um, and then I have the BMC 64. So obviously the BMC 64 uh, is really fun or whatever, but it doesn't look the part. So I will probably replace it with the uh, ultimate, or not the ultimate, with the um, the C64. By the way, whoever named it the C64 should be punched in the mouth. Um, you know, I get it that there's, I'm sure there was some uh, copyright issues. They couldn't call it the new Commodore 64. They could, I mean, there's things they couldn't do. But to refer, I mean, to call it, make it one word and call it the C64, it's just awful. Uh, it's a tongue twister for podcasters everywhere. So, um, uh, maybe, uh, when I'm done streaming tonight, I may go, uh, I don't know that I have it in me for one more Karateka run is the problem. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, it'll be fun to play with. And, um, uh, I haven't messed with Reese, uh, Reese C60 or Re 64, um, but you know, I, I'm lying when I said I only have three because in the other corner over here is my mist and I have a Commodore 64, uh, core for that FPGA. So, I mean, I'm literally surrounding myself with machines that all do the same thing. And it was kind of a novelty to hook different ones up and compare them and see, you know, this one's better. This one's, uh, it's not just better though. Um, and I am going to mute this for a second. Um, it's not just about which one's better. It can also be like, which one's more convenient? Um, you know, I mean, if you've got this, you know, the the mini C64, for example, uh, you know, I mean, it's okay, but you've got to put all those switches. You've got to rename files sometimes to get it to use the right joystick port and do this and do that. And, and um, you know, ideally they want you to use that joystick that comes with it that has all the weird buttons on there to, to, access uh, function keys and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, being able to, uh, let me see if I can stretch this up where you can see it. Um, on my PC, I have this uh, dongle. You have to just imagine that you can see the other end of this, but it's just a normal USB cable that comes into this Y splitter dongle. And this is literally a DB9 uh, adapter. So this is DB9 to USB. So I can hook up Atari joysticks and I've got my um, Epix joystick right here. Uh, so this is plugged in, you know, to a USB port on my PC. So, so there are, are more things than just uh, accuracy, you know, but uh, that being said, the Ultimate 64 is, uh, I mean, just about as accurate as you could get. And um, it, you know, it's, and I do have my real Commodore 64, which is funny because that's the one thing I don't have hooked up in here right now. I still have that uh, in storage. So the idea is that on that wall behind me there, uh, sometime soon, I'm going to start filling that with shelves and, uh, and, you know, have some of my old systems on display up there. But, you know, so it's it's not just a matter of, of accuracy. That is part of it. You know what? I also have an SX-64. Every time I stop and think, I go, no, there's another one. I got another Commodore somewhere. I do have an SX-64 in the closet over there. So I'm just, I'm overflowing with Commodore, which is not a bad place to be uh, in, in 2020. We've spent uh, 
essentially the last nine months locked down, not going out, not doing stuff, not going to movies, not going to concerts, not doing all these things. And it can be enough to drive you crazy. And I got to tell you, I've spent an awful lot of time playing retro games and sitting in here in my office and uh, and just kind of enjoying um, thinking of uh, old stuff. And uh, sometimes dancing. (laughs) Well, that doesn't get old, does it? Uh, So anyway, well, I think I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to go open my uh, the C64. Go uh, plug it in and uh, give it a run and see how it runs. So thank you. Let me go look in the uh, chat one time here. I see. Uh, in, and you know what? I, I've, I've watched uh, the guys uh, on the Amigos, which have kind of been my, uh, uh, I would say, my, my pattern that I've, I've uh, you know, based a lot of my, my streams and my format and stuff on. Uh, and I've watched them go through uh, – and stumble over people's names and i'm like geez can you not just read the names and i'm looking at names now and i'm like well i get it uh i can't see if that is mislinity i hope i'm saying that right uh obviously i've been talking to lord soup and tin tan and up there at the top is in minkin and uh lurks who has shown up i don't somebody can help me out i don't know if um that's a bot or i don't know uh what or whom uh yeah i guess that is a uh uh just a bot that seems to uh, show up whenever i stream but uh uh anywho yeah i i've uh uh think that i'm gonna go try that out so now i can't click off of that stupid thing so oh and look how slow karateka is running with uh, everything else going too bad for that so all right guys hey thanks everybody for tuning in i always appreciate you guys um you know i i've said before that uh uh you know without you guys it's just a weird old dude sitting in his office playing with old toys and playing old games which is not nearly as much fun so thank you guys for showing up and uh validating me just a little bit making making me feel a little less weird about uh, playing old games so thank you guys i uh, appreciate you all and i will uh, talk to you soon Oh, don't forget, tomorrow's episode of uh, Sprite Castle will be coming out. And obviously, if you were here, you know that we'll be talking about uh, Karateka. So uh, check out um, either my website or the Amigos feed, and uh, you'll be able to catch that episode. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later.